welcome back to 20 Minutes or Less. I'm Steve Zaragoza. And I'm Joseph Daniel Beretta. Yes, you are. It's no secret that cockroaches are horrible, filthy, annoying, disgusting, disease-carrying pests. So why not use them for good? For once. Yeah, it turns out some scientists have been working on, believe it or not, the ability to remotely control cockroaches for, a, like, a long time. For science. And more importantly, for saving lives. Hopefully. Cockroaches saving lives? That's crazy talk, Joe. But according to Iper Boskurt, assistant professor of electrical engineering at NCS, it isn't. He says, our aim was to determine whether we could create a wireless biological interface with cockroaches. Ultimately, we think this will allow us to create a mobile web of smart sensors that uses them to collect and transmit information, such as finding survivors in a building that's been destroyed by an earthquake. Cool and gross. But if it came down to a matter of life and death, bring on the Joe's apartment. Whoa. That reference is going to go over so many people's heads. Jerry O'Connell. Boskert says they, quote, decided to use biobotic cockroaches in place of robots, as designing robots at that scale is very challenging, and cockroaches are experts at performing in such a hostile environment. Still gross. Okay, so how do they make this tech work? Easy. They built a tiny roach-sized electronic backpack using an off-the-shelf microcontroller. Kind of like the ones you see at Radio Shack and think, who the hell buys that sh**? And a wireless receiver and transmitter. Sounds adorable. They then take that adorable little backpack and put it on the backs of Madagascar hissing cockroaches. Gross. Connecting the controller to the electrodes and plant it on the little guy's antennae. Gross. In Cersei. Gross. Which is the small sensory appendage at the end of the roach's abdomen they use to detect movement in the air. Gross. When the scientists activate the electrode, it makes them walk forward. The sensors connected to their antennas perform a similar function, acting like reins, and pointing the cockroach in the direction the scientists want them to go. Cool! And gross! Now, editors, put me on a giant cockroach and give me a cowboy hat so I can do this. Yeehaw! I'm riding a giant cockroach! Why did you do that? I don't know, because it's awesome. Oh, uh, I don't know, because it's selfish? You put more work on the editors. They gotta sit in there. Oh, wait, 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 You guys, you guys, editors, put me on Falcor from NeverEnding Story. Oh, look at me, I'm on Falcor! Whee! I want to be on Falcor. No. This tech is pretty awesome, and if used to save people, I'm all for it. Of course, you could always consider the evil implications of something like this, like using the tiny jerks as creepy insectoid spies. Well, it's not that far-fetched to consider that frightening scenario, dude, because especially since the same group is looking into using this tech on moths. Flying remote control bugs used for scary, terrible things, or for us to play with in between stories at work, which would be awesome. Science! So, what other ways do you think scientists could use bugs to help save lives? Let us know in the comments down below. Crawl over to the like button, then crawl up to the subscribe, and then crawl over this here annotation and to bring you to more source-fed stories. I'm Joe Beretta. I'm Steve Zaragoza. Now we're both on Falcor! Yeah! We're gonna get you guys! <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs>